What's up guys, welcome to the Filmmaker's Guide. Today we're going to be going through my top 10 movies from the 1980s. Now this can be from the early 80s to the late 80s, doesn't really matter, but let's get right into it. Number 10, 1988's Die Hard by John McTiernan, starring Bruce Willis, Alan Rickman, Bonnie Bedelia, Reginald Vell Johnson, and Alexander Gudnoff. Die Hard is an action movie, THE action movie depending on who you ask. I think this film was a defining moment not only in Bruce Willis's career, but in the action genre. It's suspenseful, action-packed, and full of interesting characters and character motivations. However, there are a couple questionable sequels spawned from this franchise. Number 9, 1984's Ghostbusters by Ivan Reitman, starring Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, Ernie Hudson, and Sigourney Weaver. Ghostbusters is a film with an all-star cast centered around hunting down the paranormal and trapping them in order to protect mankind. However, it's much funnier and interesting, and by interesting, I mean insane. The plot of this film is more than meets the eye. Let's just leave it at that. Wait, did I just make a Transformers reference? Number 8, 1986's Stand By Me by Rob Reiner, starring River Phoenix, Will Wheaton, Corey Feldman, Jerry O'Connell, and Kiefer Sutherland. Stand By Me is sort of an emotional roller coaster, but this movie is so nostalgic to me. It makes me cherish my childhood experiences, but also makes me value the people in my life while simultaneously making me feel like I need to make the best of a bad situation. Great film. Number 7, 1987's Spaceballs by Mel Brooks, starring Bill Pullman, John Candy, and Rick Moranis. It's really hard to pull off a Star Wars parody. I'm not just talking about fan backlash. I mean, it had to be difficult to not completely ruin it and also not take itself way too seriously. I think this movie pulled it off pretty good. Number 6, 1980's Airplane by David Zucker, Jim Abrams, and Jerry Zucker, starring Leslie Nielsen, Robert Hayes, and Julie Haggerty. This film has always been funny no matter what generation you're from. The Naked Guns and Airplane both have one thing in common, and it's not Leslie Nielsen, the comedic legend. It's that they're parody comedies, easy to enjoy, and always a good film to watch with friends. Number 5, The Lost Boys by Joe Schumacher, starring Corey Feldman and Corey Haim. I don't really see the need in listing the other actors. The sequels, not good. This one, good. Believe it or not, Corey Feldman was normal, and Corey Haim didn't abuse drugs at one point. This film was another defining film, at least for the vampire genre. This film also never forgets to just focus on being its own movie. It doesn't take itself overly seriously, making it a fun experience in general. Number 4, 1984's The Karate Kid by John G. Avildsen, starring Ralph Macchio and Pat Morita. Ralph Macchio and Pat Morita make the perfect duo. You don't have to be a martial artist to relate to the relationship, almost father-son-ish, and it totally works for this film. This film makes you root for the protagonist and really want a happy ending. It does what a film should and is universally recognizable and familiarized. It's kind of hard not to have heard of The Karate Kid. Best thing about this film is Jaden Smith isn't in this one. Number 3, 1985's Rambo First Blood by George P. Cosmatos, starring Sylvester Stallone. Enough said. Just kidding. This film is action-packed and suspenseful. I think it's near impossible not to enjoy this one. Some adrenaline-inducing scenes and some amazing acting and dedication shown by Stallone as usual. You gotta really want to watch this. As a matter of fact, I watched this so much as a kid that my DVD was so scratched it hardly played. But it didn't really matter to me at the time. I'd still sit through it. Number 2, 1982's E.T. by Steven Spielberg, starring Drew Barrymore and Henry Thomas. Who would have thought that an extraterrestrial and a human child would make a good movie? Not Mac and Me or Short Circuit. Those are a bit different. This one was special. Steven Spielberg definitely hit the hammer on the nail with this film. Great family film clear motivations, and story arcs and interesting plot. I vaguely remember this film as I had only seen it about two or three times and I was very young, but I do remember enjoying it and I've still seen clips here and there and it still looks pretty great. We finally made it to number one, 1986 Top Gun by Tony Scott. Now I know some of you out there might be booing that I chose Top Gun as my number one 1980s film. This has mostly been an action based 1980s list, it wasn't on purpose however. This is just my personal opinion, I do have some others that I kinda had trouble with making a definite decision. Anyway, this movie is starring Tom Cruise, Maverick and Goose's Great Balls of Fire was the best part of this movie in my opinion. Another film with a good story and characters and also really interesting. I only saw this movie twice, oddly enough but I still enjoy it.